Hey everybody, I'm Todd with Sweet Tea Guitars. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. Welcome to the Great Guitar Build Off 2023 and my scratch build entry. All right, you guys, before we get into this video and I show you this footage that I've gotten, I felt the need to tell you a few things before we get rolling on this. First of all, as you can see, I've kind of redone my shop here. I've organized everything a little better. I have tweaked the settings in the Canon M6, which I will continue to do over the next couple of weeks after I see this footage back on the, uh, on the software. And actually, once I post it, I've noticed in practically every video I've ever shot, you know, my forehead starts to get blown out or my white hair starts to disappear. Anyway, I've been playing with the settings. I'd appreciate some feedback. I noticed as I was dumping all the video files that I've shot for this video over the past week or so, that part of those files were missing audio. What had happened was I bought myself a new Sennheiser lavalier microphone in a quest to improve the audio quality as well as the video. There was something faulty about the adapter and I didn't realize it. I've got all that fixed now. I hope it's not too much of a bother. I promise you the future videos won't have those issues. So without any more delay, let's get rolling on the video. I really hope you guys enjoy it. I need the radius to fretboard before we install the fret markers, at least initially radius the fretboard. We can finish that up once we have the fret markers installed. Before we can do that, however, I started thinking today while I was at work I really need to get these tops glued on this body. So let's recap what we've got here. I've got a center strip of white North American ash, black veneer, two purple heart stripes, more black veneer, two curly maple stripes, more black veneer, and then two pieces of swamp ash. Well, this body's not thick enough. I'm sitting at about 38 millimeters right now. I want to be at 44 millimeters and I had told you guys in a previous episode that I was going to sacrifice this purple heart top and then I'm going to put this North American white ash top over the purple heart. I'm still going to do that but I'm going to put a black fiber line between the purple heart and the ash. So all I really need to do is take my scraper and just give this a couple of passes. Get that glue line cleaned up on both sides. You don't need to go crazy with it. It's pretty flat already. I glued it up on the granite. Let's run the sander over it. That's 220 grit on the sander, so it's not super aggressive. I've already got a center line drawn on here. So the first thing we want to do is make sure um, we've got our purple heart placed like we want it. One up here. As soon as I get this top glued up, you guys, we can go back to the neck. But I want this thing to be ready when I'm ready. Let's brush that top off. We don't want any dust. Certainly no little humps of wood or anything like that. So we're going purple heart first, black line, then ash. I love doing this right here. You know, I know the shape that's coming. It's a new shape. It's an original shape. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope you guys like this shape. Here we go. Now, again, nice and clean. Black line. And now our ash. Let's make sure we're nice and clean. All right, now let's start our clamp up. Uh, 
All right, you guys, there we go. Um, my tops are glued up, so we're ready. When I get ready for these, they'll be ready for me. So that's what I wanted to accomplish. Let me get this mess cleaned up. I'll come back and we'll continue on the neck. We're going to take a 0.5 millimeter pencil, our protractor, we'll need a rule or two, but I'll grab that in just a minute, and I want to get all remnants of the old center line off of here. Instead of going all the way to the end down here, we'll come to the first fret, because I know the router reached that far. All right. Very lightly, because a 0.5 will break off if it gets down in the fret slot. You just want a light center line. Using that center line, we're going to come up here to the nut line we made, and I'm going to come 21 and a half millimeters on each side of that center line we just made. That will give us a 43 millimeter nut width. What we're going to have to do is get over to the spindle sander and take some of this width off of our volute area right here. So I need to get that done first. There's a bunch of different ways I could take care of that. But I feel like the spindle sander is going to be the safest. So let's head over there and we could probably go ahead and get this headstock shape a little closer to its final shape as well. So let's jump over there and get that done. What I need to do is mark myself a line that follows the taper down the side of the fretboard. So for that, let's just take our ruler seven millimeters in from our edge here. And we'll make another mark up here seven millimeters in as well. Using this center line, we can actually use this to mark out our locations for our fret dots. I can see that good enough to know where I need to punch in these marks at. I need one there. And I want to be dead on that line. You want these to be right because they're the slightest bit off. You can tell it. I've got those little dimples so I'll let the brad point find itself. I've got my depth stop set. There we go. I've got a sheet of 40 grit on my 16 inch Maximum Guitar Works radius block. We're going to radius this fretboard right here, at least down to the point to where I can get rid of the center line. We won't do a final radius on it yet because I still need to install the fret markers. We're going to do that soon, but first, let's get this initial radius cut in to this fretboard. I think a 16 inch radius is a super comfortable radius for a tremolo guitar that's the way we're gonna go. I'm telling you guys, since I've started turning the block upside down and running the neck back and forth across the sanding block, I cannot tell you how much easier putting a radius on a fretboard is doing it that way instead of moving the block. So a big shout out to Neil Jelks from NSJ Guitars. Thank you, Neil, for that tip. Anyway, this is what I'm talking about. 
Uh, we're going to start like this, not too much downward pressure. We want to establish that radius. Um, when you do start to press down a little, just be mindful. You want to keep this cut even on both sides and even from nut to heel as well. I'll do, you know, 50 strokes, 100 strokes, whatever, with my neck facing this way. Then I'll turn my neck around and I'll go from this direction for roughly the same number of strokes. It doesn't have to be exact. You just need to really pay attention to your cut. Uh, once I start getting close to that center line, I'll back off of my stroke length and only go about two and a half, three inches on my stroke back and forth. That kind of helps me keep even pressure and make sure I'm cutting a flat radius into the fretboard. And all right, let me show you guys something. So you can see I've got a triangle. It disappears right here and then it's back again right here. That means that either my truss rod's adjusted, which I can tell that it's not because I can turn it with my finger, or it means I've got some positive relief in this neck naturally from a bow. But I'm not worried about that right now. We got plenty of fretboard thickness to work that out. But I want to check that because this neck's been sitting for a while. I mean like three weeks with nothing being done to it. So it very well could have moved a little. I'll keep double checking it with the straight edge. We'll continue to do this until I have a nice flat surface. You want to avoid the temptation of only sanding these two ends. You'll never get your fretboard flat. What you want on a fretboard is a dead flat fretboard. So if you check it in three spots, on the edge we'll say down this fret marker line, in the center and right here you want to be able to see a light, tight surface all the way down the length of this fretboard. Crucially important. We're getting there. Our center line's almost gone here. I can see that cathedraling not only disappearing, but it's disappearing evenly on both sides. Same deal down here. So let's just keep going. Looking pretty gnarly at the moment. But that's what we've got. I really love that. I think it's going to turn out really, really cool. And all I really want to do is go down through here and get this tube flush with the surface of the fretboard. Just a little acetone. It dries almost instantly. I've got a two and a half millimeter drill bit loaded up in my Miller's Falls hand drill. We're going to clean out the center of these holes. I want this black super glue to be deep enough to where you can't see through it. I want to fill from the bottom up so I take less of a chance of getting bubbles. And you want to leave this proud. It's fine to use activator. But if you want a nice glossy surface, don't use it immediately. Let the super glue sit here for four or five minutes. And we're going to put Mother of Pearl bots in the uh, two outside ones on the 12th and the 24th. All right, you guys, when we left off last night, I had glued the tops on the Saris body. We're gonna get back to work on this neck after we pop these clamps off. I got the fret markers installed last night. My side dots are already on. We've got an initial radius on this fretboard. We're making progress, you guys, so let's pop these clamps off and check out this body. 
So there's our body blank, all ready for some magic. I can't wait to get started on this, but before we can do this, we've got to get this neck finished. I want to grab my 16 inch radius block. I'm going to pull this 80 off here. We'll save the 80. I'm going to put some 180 on this thing. We'll get it nice and centered and straight. Cut the excess off and pop this thing in the vise. I think first what we'll do is take a file and level off that super glue real quick. Don't want to go too far. I certainly don't want to scar my fretboard up unnecessarily, which will only create, you know, more work for us in the end. But I need a sip of coffee. Cheers, my brothers and sisters. Let's jump over here to the radius block. There we go, the Saris neck. I'm super happy with the, the fret marker design. I love that. I think it looks, um, you know, like some kind of communication. So we're sanded. Our fretboard's dead flat. We got a 16 inch radius in this thing. It's time to start marking this thing up for a carve. Tonight's Thursday, August the 3rd, so I'm about to have a three day weekend. We're absolutely going to get this neck carved this weekend, but I have got to move back to the Astrolabe build late tomorrow night at the latest. I want to make myself a mark two millimeters below my fretboard. I'm using a 0.5 millimeter pencil for this. And I need two points of reference so I can draw a straight line. So right before it goes into um, the hill transition, I want this neck to be 22 millimeters thick here. Down here on my first fret, right after it leaves the curve from the volute, I want it to be 20 millimeters thick. You know, I've said from the beginning, this guitar is gonna be a rock and roll machine. If this guitar gets put in the hands of a shredder, it should be able to accommodate them nicely. So I'm going for somewhat of a thin neck on this thing. There's my line, a 20 to 22 millimeter taper. I want to observe the taper on this carve right here. So between these two lines, we're half in that distance. I'm gonna draw off this line That's our first facet line for the side. We want to do the same thing. So first, we need that two millimeter line below the bottom side of our fretboard. Let's mark that line. So now, I need to come half the distance between my two millimeter line and that line that I just made. Well, we know that this is 12, so that's six, same as the other side. Symmetry is absolutely important here. That's 14, so we want seven. So there's the sides of our neck taken care of. Let's draw ourselves a temporary center line. We'll just find the center of the purple heart. Once we get these first two facets carved, we can start using the veneer lines and the laminate pieces to get ourselves perfectly symmetrical. At this point of the neck, we're at 22 millimeters on each side, so 44 millimeters wide. Um, we want half a 22, which is 11. We want to do the same thing down here. We're going to go 12 and a half millimeters from the center line. 
on this end. I want to observe that taper. That's the point. Same thing on this side. Now you may be asking yourself, why don't you get the whole back of the neck flat right to that line we made where we marked out our thickness? Well, because it'll be easier for me to remove that material once I get at least this first facet cut. It'll be less material that I'm having to remove from this whole flat because we're about to take this entire chunk away. But let me explain to you guys what's going on here for those of you who don't know. I came two millimeters below my fretboard line and I measured 20 millimeters thick from the top of my fretboard to where I want my neck profile total thickness to be at the center line. 20 millimeters. Down here on the 14th fret, I went to 22 millimeters. So it's going to be a slight taper. Everything's symmetrical except for that taper that allows the neck to get a bit thicker as we go up towards the 24th fret. On the back side, I found a new center line. I measured total width of the neck roughly at the nut line. I got it to where it was an even number, 44 millimeters wide. Half of that's 22, half of that's 11. So I came 11 millimeters from my center line on this end. Down here, we were at 25 and a half, so 51. So I said tw uh, half of that's 12 and a half millimeters from our center line on each side. That's what this tape line is indicating. So everything that's left exposed needs to be removed on both sides. That's going to, first of all, get us symmetrical. Secondly, it's going to allow us to create our first facet. So you want to make sure that your measurements are completely accurate if you're going for perfect symmetry here. The symmetrical shape of your neck's only gonna be as good as your measurements are. I shape necks by feel normally, but I decided before I started this that I was gonna go through this mathematically with you guys so you can know, and so I can know, um, what my neck shaping process is. That's the deal, I've got my fretboard taped off so I don't damage it. We're gonna start this neck shape. We'll at least get the neck profile cut in. So I got some tools out right here. Um, a couple of new things actually. Tapered end Nicholson vintage double zero cut file right here. I got a feeling this thing's gonna be awesome. I also lucked up so much and I got this Nicholson. Um, this is a hand stitched rasp, a number 10 cut. This thing feels like a cat's tongue or shark skin, whatever you want to call it. And then my standard stuff. I've got the Shinto saw rasp here. I've got two Iwasakis for this initial part of the neck carve, a half round medium cut and a flat medium cut. Then I've got my little hand stitch rasp that I got from Lee Ballet Tools. I love this thing. Anyway, let's get rolling on this neck shaping. I am anxious to get going on this. I have been looking forward to this since I got the shop put back together. So you know the deal. We're just going to start taking this material away. And I'll use the shin to it first. So what I want to do is cut up to this tape line on this side. And then I'll ramp everything down so I can catch the rest of the material that needs to be removed down to the tape line that I've got on the side of the neck. The one thing that I have learned is that one of the most crucial parts of a neck shaping process or of the neck shaping process, it is so important to keep your facet flat. So establish the angle and make sure you are flat all the way down the neck. You don't want to create a round over yet. You want this to be a perfectly flat facet. When we start to roll off these edges, if they're not flat, um, you'll wind up with a screwed up neck profile. 
and that's just no good. I always finish up each facet with a fine cut Iwasaki. And as you guys heard me say many, many times, once you learn to control the Iwasaki, you can leave yourself with a finish ready surface that almost needs no sanding. Iwasakis are so great. So there we go. We're gonna move to this side now. Same thing, Shinto first. I like to cut that corner off to start with. Then I'll rake it back and start moving towards that tape line. Now, if you slip and grind into your tape edge, it's not the end of the world, don't freak out. You're gonna have plenty of opportunities to fix that. All right, let me run over this with the fine cut Iwasaki and I'll pull this out of the clamp and show you guys what I mean, if you don't know already. So there's my first two facets cut. And what I've been doing is flattening out this area in between those two tape lines. And I'm happy with where I'm at now. In the interest of making an informative video, I'm going to use math, or I'm at least going to show you guys the measurements. So what I want to do is half the distance. I'm looking at 15 millimeters right here, so we're going to come to seven and a half and make a tick. We're going to come down here. We're at 15 millimeters. I'm going to come to seven and a half and make a tick. Now we'll take a ruler. So I'll take a piece of this half inch masking tape and we're going to line the outside of that line. There's that one. Let's do the same thing on this side. We want to come halfway in between our center line, which I can see, and that area. So we're looking at, we'll say 12 millimeters. And then this is where our taper is going to come into play. On this end, we're at 10. We're going to come to 5. Same thing over here. Just like so. That's the area we want to take away. So this is a much shallower cut. Before we move away from the Shinto, we'll go ahead and establish the angle on this side as well. Move straight to the fine cut Iwasaki. All right, I can fill two defined facet points on that side. Let's do the same thing over here. So there's our first two facets cut. I'm gonna use this veneer line, which is ultimately the same edge that we just got through cutting on this facet, other than the fact that we observed the taper. Now I'm gonna cut halfway from this veneer line and this veneer line from the center. So we're not gonna use tape for this. We wanna leave a defined point on our center line. And we wanna see a straight line. We don't want waves and wiggles and any of that kind of stuff down that line at the bottom of the facet. And at this point of the neck carb, you guys, Mathematics and reason leave me. From here on out, I shape the neck by feel. You know, once I've established those flat facets and I'm sure that I can maintain a straight, flat neck profile, then that gives me a nice base to start with to create the profile that I'm after on the final guitar. 
we're going to use this outside veneer line as a guide for how much material we want to remove. If you're not carving a multi-laminate neck, you can take a ruler and mark the neck up because this is the point that we're going to start to determine what final profile this neck has. And in this case, like I said in the beginning, somewhat of a flatter D shape, but I still want a nice round fill in the hand. I mean, on the shoulder of the neck, which I consider this outside area of the carve right here. I want that to feel nice and comfortable and rounded. This is starting to look and feel like a guitar neck. I'm going to take a scraper, and a thick scraper in this case. This is a .80 Baco or Baco. I love this scraper. And we're going to get well-defined facet points with this thing. Okay. Now we've got four really super defined facets at this point. What I want to start doing now is rolling off the points, getting rid of the corners. I'm using a medium cut Iwasaki. And I like to do one side so you've got a visual representation of what the other side needs to look like. And looking at it from overhead like this, you can kind of see the perspective. We're coming together nicely. That is looking really nice, you guys. Let's pop it out of the clamp so you guys can see it. And I love that curly maple. All right, you guys, so here's the neck for the Saris. 24 frets, 25 inch scale, 16 inch radius, brass tube with black super glue inserted in that. Um, I've got white mother of pearl on the outer two markers for the 12th and the 24th fret. Matching side dot, same deal. I've got my rough profile cut in. We're not final sanded yet, but this is going to be such a beautiful neck, you guys. It already feels so comfortable. And that curly maple down the middle, that is going to scream when I start to put some finish on this neck. I really think this is going to turn out to be a great one. I am super anxious to try my 3x3 headstock design for this thing. That's going to do it for me for this video. I apologize once again for the audio and the focus issues, you guys. I promise I'll try not to let that happen again. I was in a huge hurry to get the shop put back together on that last day. I spent four days in here cleaning everything out, putting it all back, dusting everything off, and making sure everything was clean and ready for another four, five, six months of hardcore guitar building. I love it, you guys. You know I do. Don't forget to head over to Geo's channel at Tornella Guitars here on YouTube. Check out the latest installment for our community category build that we're doing the collaboration for, um, which is part of the great guitar build off community category this year. I feel so fortunate to have crossed that 2000 mark, you guys, and I could not have ever done it without you guys, and I could not be more thankful for that. I really appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so much for all your support over the past three years. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Everything I'm doing is in an effort to improve the content that I'm posting here on YouTube. All right, you guys, one more thing. I'd like to send a heartfelt thank you to Daniel from Devil and Sons, Aaron from Adair Guitars, and to Scott from Bonehead Guitars for the invitation and allowing me to participate 
in the live stream this past Thursday morning for the Guitar Builders Collective live stream that those guys have been doing every Thursday. I was honored and humbled to be asked to participate in that. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. If you have not seen that episode, go check it out. It's over on Daniel's channel. If you're not familiar with the Guitar Builders Collective, check them out here on YouTube. You can follow them on Instagram. There's an app from the App Store. It's a super great organization to be involved in if you're an aspiring guitar builder. So I hope you guys will continue to visit the channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can stay up to date as I release every video that I've got planned for the rest of the summer on into the winter time this year. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, peace and love.